YouTubers. So welcome to the channel. I am pleased to say that I am starting a brand new series. So you might be wondering about the name. Now kiss and make up. Well, I'll tell you why in a second. So what I wanted to do was put a little bit of a twist on beauty. So I'm going to be telling the tales of some of the most gruesome but yet beautiful women of our time and also all the way back to the 17th century. I'll be doing that as I'm featuring some of the most amazing beauty products and lines that I personally love and work with. So um, our first one we will be featuring is Metaluso. So Metaluso is the epitome of everything that we will be talking about today except for the true crime part. <laughs> so they're not, they don't have any part of that. But I will say that one thing I think we never understand when we're thinking of true crime from medieval times, the Victorian era, is the mass amount of mel mental illness that was going on. So that's why I thought this was important to not even, in to incorporate that we don't look at it that way. We just think of it as like this crazy story of this lady down in her basement like mixing potions and like feeding it to, you know, her husband or her kids or whoever, you know, she wanted to have taken off her, um, her list of people that she's going after. But in all reality, a large part of all that was due to mental illness and how it was not taken care of. So that's why Metaluso was so important to do for my first video, my first series. So, or my first episode, I should say. I will not be cutting out any mistakes. Y'all will see me if I'm making mistakes or if I'm not. So, sorry, that's just who I am. But anyways, back to this awesome brand. Metaluso not only is about beauty, but they are about your mental wellness as, as well. So they wanna make sure that you feel beautiful on the inside and out. Now, I cannot say that as much for the first episode, the lady that we will be debuting and talking about takes us back to the Victorian era. So we are going to be talking about 17th century Julia Tufana. Now, if you don't know who Julia Tufana is, trust me, you will know by the end of this. Welcome back, YouTubers. So as I said before, we are going to be talking about Julia Tufana. So who is Julia? Why are we talking about her? Well, Julia was known as the Italian poisoner. So she's known as a bunch of other names too, but I think that was kind of more fitting. So Julia not only was able to get away with helping aid women murder their husbands for over, I think just about 50 years it said, but um, she, there's not a lot that is known about her as far as there's not pictures of her. You don't really find anything about her and that's because the people that went to her protected her and literally sheltered her from anything that might happen, you know, as a result of her helping them. So, to better understand Julia and why she did what she did, or what she says is the reason why she did what she did, we'll say. Aren't you embarrassed? <laughs> ah. You never really know. S women in the 17th century were not seen as these glorious, free people. They were basically slaves to whoever they married. So you were made to sit there, look cute, you know, look pretty, don't really say too much, and take care of the kids. You know, you were a housewife. That's what you were. There was no going out working. There was no, you know, hey, I'm gonna go hang out with, you know, my friends and all that that wasn't a thing then that just wasn't a thing so it was very 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 sheltered life back in that day and so to understand that julia in a way was trying to help those women she was trying to say hey you know you don't want to be in this situation the only other alternative to this is basically becoming what they call the sex worker or a you know prostitute basically or because divorce wasn't an option it wasn't a thing 
So those were your two options. You get married, you move on, or you become a prostitute. I mean, either which way, I guess you're kind of screwed if you're a female in the 17th century. So a lot of this though boils down to mental illness and not being seen in the 17th century. Women did not go up to people and say, hey, having these thoughts, you know, like I might want to tell somebody. No, they, they'd be like, look, sis, you're getting hung at, on a tree and you're going to be called a witch for, <laughs> for even saying that. So it wasn't a thing. They didn't do that. So they had to basically just push it way down and uh, deal with it or, you know, you just you phone a friend, you know. You, you get in a carriage, you trot on over to, to Julia, to Fana, and uh, you get yourself some makeup products. I assure you, these are safe. <laughs> so, and you, um, you know, you, you take care of the problem yourself because it was better to be a widow than it was to be divorced, which again, wasn't even really an option. So, where does this story begin? Well, to really, really understand it, Julia didn't come from what you would call the average family. Now, Julia's mother, so, um, which was uh, Thofiana, so she, or at least that was believed to be her name, they say, she actually was who began this little endeavor, which, if you wanna call it a family business, I guess you could, as sick as that sounds. But, you know, um, it could be called one. Hey, who am I to judge? So, everyone has their thing, right? And also, just to pause for one moment, I'm, I'm Julia. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and let you know if you're, in, if you're interested in any of the products that I'm showing today, I'll have some links down below. Um, they are, like I said, all vegan, all natural. They are completely the epitome of you know vegan glam and also the lux love and luxury metalusa literally means love and luxury and that's what it's going to give you it is going to give you that little bit of a hug it's going to love you and it's going to make you look luxurious so i'm just saying if you end up wanting any of the products that you see here please just look below and i have them displayed so you can see the names and i will also just say what i'm using as i'm putting it on so that's how that'll go so the first one I'm going to be using is the Metaluso Primer. Of course, where do you start? Like we're starting with Julia from the beginning. So the base of the story is, is that Julia, as a child, basically her mother used to spend a lot of time with apothecaries. Well, who are apothecaries? We all know. They make the drugs. <laughs> so she spent a lot of time with them. Well, she learned a thing or two. So Julia's mom went ahead and uh, started making her own potions. She's watching the apothecaries do their thing and she's like, hey, I can do that. Like, why can't I do that? So she, well, I mean, it, the story goes on to say that through doing this, she actually was, well, she was put to death for killing her own husband. Do you think he was her first test subject? Just saying. I mean, I wouldn't put it past her. But anyway, so that was kind of the story of, of her mom, is that she followed these apothecaries. She learned to kind of how to mix these, these concoctions, these elixirs, these potions, and she started doing it herself, which probably should have been someone's first line of like, wait a minute why is mom in the basement like just you know mixing up potions and all of a sudden dad's dead like I'm sorry but I'd ask questions I'm just I'm way too nosy I would ask the questions just saying I would be like what is going on why is this happening why is mom not come up from the basement in 12 hours so just saying but anyway so that is how that started now Julia's mom was known to be very, very beautiful. She was known to be very, very, um, she was aesthetically pleasing, as they say. So, but she was in a marriage that obviously she never wanted to be in. Well, we know what happened to him. So Julia, 
after her mom perfected her uh, elixirs or potions, if you will, Julia kind of took over the family business. Now, when does Julia come into play? Well, Julia comes into play on August 7th. She was actually born in a, in a town of, she was born in, I believe, Palermo. So she basically was around this. It wasn't odd for her. It wasn't weird for her. It wasn't really something that, you know, she thought is weird, I guess, because she, her mom, like I said, she was already doing this. So it wasn't like a weird thing. It was like, oh, mom's, you know, just down there mixing stuff up. Like, hey, she wants me to help, I'm gonna help. So, and I think that's what happens with most. I mean, if we really, really think about it, most children that do have issues, like I said, it kind of comes, stems back to the mental health issue of things. Most, you know, children that experience issues like that, they do in fact have an odd upbringing. Not all, but most, um, I, I think I could safely say. So she actually, she wasn't weirded out by this. This wasn't a weird thing, like mixing potions and, you know, elixirs and things like that. It wasn't weird to her. So anyway, so Julia went ahead and kind, after her mom was obviously, you know, put to death, which I'm sure for any child that would be crazy and just tragic. Well, I think Julia just had the ambition to, you know, keep that family business going. So she ended up starting a, or, or continuing the, the uh, cosmetic line, which is known as Aqua Tofina. So the Aqua Tofina, obviously, <laughs> oddly enough, means Tofina water. So let me just say that if a friend of mine is coming at me with something, you know, that has her name on it and water, I'm gonna have questions. I'm gonna be like, what the, like why? What are, what are you giving me? What is this for? Yeah, especially if I know what your mama did. I'm just saying, we couldn't be friends. I'd have too many questions, way too many questions. <laughs> So that's what she did. And also what I'm applying right now, just so you guys have a quick, uh, this is the full cover concealing cream, the mix. Um, this is a three way use. Uh, you can either use it for concealing, you can use it for eye primer, or you can use it as a foundation. Just wanted to lay that out there so you guys know what I'm doing. I am actually using it to conceal. But anyway, so back to Julia. So, Julia basically made her mark by being suspected of killing over 600 men over 50, over almost 50 years. And she did this by offering her clients, if you will, um, cosmetic products that were very easily, they just blend in. You wouldn't know. You would just, you know, the husband would just see a, a powder pad or something, you know, out there. And, and he wouldn't think twice about it because it looked like a normal cosmetic product. So that's how she'd get away with it. They'd grab that product and this wasn't something that would kill them instantly. She was smart about it. That's the crazy part about this is that she completely thought this out. So not only did her mother come up with and Julia later on perfected the way that it worked. So it would come down to, it would take at least three doses of this to really kick it. Now, you might be thinking, well, why is that, you know, genius? Well, because it gave them enough time to get their wills drawn up, their affairs in order. You gotta remember, back in that time, they didn't have a doctor saying, oh, you have this, and so therefore, you know, you have X amount of years to live. If you got really sick and you stayed sick, you assumed you were dying. Like, that's just the way that went. There was not someone coming in an ambulance to pick you up. Like, you were gonna die. So seeing as they were probably out of it, I'm sure they weren't fully, you know, there um, during this time. I'm sure after the second dose, it just kind of was downhill from there. Um, they would go ahead and start getting their affairs in order. Well, to the women of these men, they probably thought, I'm owed this, you know, 
he's either beaten me, cheated on me, used me, you know, I, I was forced into marriage, this was an arranged marriage. To them, this was their only way out. Now, they didn't have hotlines to call back then, they didn't have people they could talk to. Like I said, they'd be considered probably witches for even having those kinds of thoughts. They would, it wouldn't end well. So, like I said, they'd probably be forced into a lot worse if they were to come out and say some things like that. So, they would go to Julia, which in a way they seen as a saintly person. I mean, someone that helped them, their, their only help, their only way out. It was better again, like I said before, to be a widow than to be a divorced, worthless woman. So that's the way they made it look. And that's what they did. So the genius part about this, this elixir or this potion was it first came out in a powder. So Julia went ahead and uh, it was in the form of a powder at first. Well, you might not think that it really has anything to do with it, but it was again still easily, it was odorless, it was tasteless. So you could throw it in, you know, a cup of tea, you could throw it in the soup, and next thing you know, Bob's on the floor, you know, not feeling so great. So that was the first way. Now, as time went on, she needed to make it a little bit more. The powder wasn't really doing it. So she perfected that, you know? And I think if you read about her and you kind of realize everything she's gone through, Julia, if anything, was very, very into her, in a way what we'd call nowadays, her brand. <laughs> Again, crazy, I know. But it was. She made profit off of it. She, you know, gave it to people just like you do with any brand or product. Now, again, I won't say it was for the good, best reasons, not advocating anything she did, because I'm just not like that, but, you know, entrepreneur, businesswoman, killer, I think we can call her a little bit of all of it. So as crazy as that is. Now, as time goes on, she ends up being able to take this powder and turn it into a liquid, which completely helps all the women around her, you know, the women that are coming to her. Now. I just have to say, <laughs> I want to know why friends of hers, you can't tell me she didn't have any friends, she didn't have any acquaintances at all, because it's later found out that through torture, and when she was literally about to be executed, they did get out of her that it was her and three other people. Now that is what the stories say. So, I want to know how these people were never like why wasn't anybody asking questions why is anybody like not checking on julia like what's going on we know what her mom did we know what was happening you know we know the gist of it no one's asking questions <laughs> i don't get it but then again it's not for me to really get so hey that's why i don't live in the 17th century because i would not be around i promise you <laughs> so anyways um knowing how mental illness can can be for some people you know as time went on she just got better and better at her craft i mean she was able to like i said transform this powder into a complete liquid which was even better because you could just take a couple drops of that pour it into like i said whatever and then mix and you mix and you know you're drawing out wills and you know your horrific husband who you don't want anymore is on his deathbed and you're in a sick way, probably very, very thankful for Julia. So, as time goes on, it is said that one of the women who Julia was helping had, she went as far as to even prepare a soup for her husband. She put the elixir in the soup, and as soon as he went to go and drink it, or, or eat it, the wife had a change of heart. Now, there's always that one Karen, right? There's always that one that just ruins it for everyone. Not saying again, what Julia was doing was good, but in that time, it was it was deemed as, you know, again, these women's only way out. So, in that time, you know, like I said, there's always one. So then, basically, the wife has a change of heart, and she's like, hey, I, 
you know, this isn't what I want anymore. So she tells the husband, don't, don't eat it. Don't, don't eat your soup. Just please don't eat it. And he's not quite understanding why that is. So I'm going to be using, just so you guys know, side note, I'll be using the Mill Collection, the matte, um, micro matte powder. The, it's a foundation and a finishing powder. Again, they like to do things as multi-use, which is so awesome when it comes down to not having to have a bunch of things out for what you're trying to do. You can just get ready and go. Anyway, so Julia, Julia's, uh, one of Julia's customers basically goes rogue. <laughs> she goes rogue and she basically is like, hey... You know don't eat this the husband's wanting to know why why is she stopping me why is she you know what's happening that she's trying to stop me so after a while of the husband kind of asking the wife and trying to figure things out the wife finally cracks now again you have to understand that she probably already endured a ton of abuse I mean that's usually why women went to Julia right they went to her for help they went to her as a way out. They went to her to have their saving grace in a way, in a, in a sick way. But anyway, so they, you know, again, 17th century, which is how it was. So back to the uh, rogue customer. So she finally breaks down. She doesn't want to. She doesn't want to because even though she's having a change of heart, she, you know, she still does not want to deal with other women not having their way out so she you know takes him a little bit but he finally gets her to talk well in getting her to talk obviously that kind of that ruins it for everyone we'll say and you know the the husband then goes to the authorities and he uh he lets them know what's been going on for 50 years i mean i'm just saying most side hustles only last like what a couple years tops this girl was able to get away with it for 50 years like most assassins can't even stay silent for that long like I'm sorry but you you did it sis I mean I've never seen anything like this in history again I do not advocate any kind of you know violence obviously not death at all it's just ugh, but I'm just saying for you to be able to get away with something like that for so long and nobody really knows what you look like or what you're doing on the daily. That takes some skill. I'll give her that. On the woman end, she had some skills. So what I'm applying here is going to be the Metaluso Many Ways Multi Wear Vegan. Um, it's the Vegan Clean Beauty Eye, Lip, and Face. So this can be used on your eyes as an eyeshadow, on your lip as a little bit of a gloss or lipstick, and on your face as I'm doing as a highlighter. So. Julia, obviously, is, is they have to punish her for this. You know, they can't have that. For one, the men are probably walking around going, oh my God, like how did this girl elude us for this long? She's a woman. She's not smart. Like, come on. You know, she's supposed to just walk around the house and, and clean and like take care of kids. Like, how is she, like I said before, in the basement chilling mixing up potions that take talent take the brain power to actually mix these things to where they're so undetectable that you're able to kill over 600 men a woman can't do that like what they can't do that so not only did they look completely stupid and hey maybe that was the moment where they were like women aren't as dumb as we thought i don't know but i do know that from what the story says is that Julia was tortured beyond belief you know so she her line the aqua uh, tofana was something that actually Mozart was known for on his deathbed you could look this up Mozart actually said that he thought he was poisoned by the aqua tofana so that was interesting. Now in all my years of schooling, I never heard nothing about that. Just saying. So those are one of those weird mysteries that you'll never really know. But at the same time, it's kind of neat. So I'll have to dive deeper into that and another time because it is very, very interesting to me um, for that to be part of that story. So anyways, 
as things are going on and things are getting a little bit heated and a little crazy, she ends up kind of giving the story of what's been happening. She fesses up to, you know, murdering, well, helping murder, you know, just a grave amount of men. Like I said, over 600 for sure. And you got to remember that that's probably a pretty vague number. I mean, you don't know how many times these women were using it on other people. Like, you just don't know. You have no idea. Um, obviously, there's no way of finding that out. So she wouldn't have known. She was just ballparking it at that point. So that was just an educated guess on her end. I'm sure. She's like, oh, well, you know, there was that time that I gave her too. And, you know... Because again, most of these transactions happen through like third parties because they were so protective of Julia. They were her savior in a way, very sick way. But again, that's just how it was. So as things are kind of going on here, she gets tortured, she ends up fessing up to it. She ends up, you know, saying, hey, yeah, I did have a part in this, I did it okay you know these women were battered they were beaten they were forced into marriages that didn't even want to be in like in a way I, I saved them you know so that was her look on it but like I said that kind of gives you this really dark look into mental health in that time because nowadays if you did something like that you would not be <laughs> left in a basement let alone anywhere near people like you'd be getting help you'd be you know trying to fix yourself like or someone's gonna try to fix you like one of the two ways you know so I mean like I said I'm I would be you couldn't I could not have been Julia's friend I could not have because like I said the second I see Karen walk in she has a husband when she walks in you know you guys go down in the basement whatever whatever next thing you know I'm finding out from the from the little boy selling bread down the street on my next market trip that, you know, Karen's wife or Karen's husband is now dead. And I'm, I'm gonna put that, that together, okay? I'm gonna go back over there and be like, Julia, look, 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 sis. What's, 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 what's that? Mm. Like, what's, 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 what's going on in here? I'm gonna be looking through all of her stuff. That's the kind of friend that I am. <laughs> I am going to be like, seriously, what is up? What's going on? What's happening? What are we not seeing? Like, people's husbands are dying only after they're seeing you. Like, what's up? But it kind of shows you, though, the different time. Because I'm sure many of you are the same way. There's no way that your friend is going to get away with that crap, especially if they're a best friend. No, 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 no. Hell to the no. You're not going to be my best friend. I promise you I'm going to see a red flag somewhere. The second you wear something that's different, the second that you wear a different perfume, you put on a different shade of eyeshadow, I am going to ask questions. Like, I know that ain't you. What are you doing? Why? But, oh, you feel fancy today? That's why you wore pink? I know better. So... It's crazy to me that no one, you know, I'm, I know they knew like the people that obviously were coming to her, but there were people around her that did not know this was happening. Insane to me. Now, they also say that, you know, these bottles of the Aqua uh, Tofina would, they actually were show they would show up and there was a couple of famous paintings that actually had the caption on them, you know, poison or love po poison I believe underneath them so it kind of shows you that in a weird way it's still kind of living on but that in that era was the the choice you know it was, it was like the the choice back then for taking care of something that you no longer wanted or wanted to be a part of was poison like you didn't go up to someone and shoot them I mean you know how long it took to load a gun back then like that wasn't gonna happen and the knives were huge, they didn't have pocket knives back then. So again, your only choice was to poison their stew. I don't know, but that's what most women did. And most women seen it, again, as their only way of being able to do this or deal with it. So, like I said, as time kind of went on, um, 
things obviously calmed down and things went from there, but she was definitely known as the woman that uh, could take care of your problems. Now you might all be thinking and wanting to judge what she did or even, you know, for the more open-minded, you might even be like, now I don't really have an opinion either way. I don't believe in women or men beating women, but I also don't believe in killing someone. So where do you stand on that? How do you, you know, justify it? Or do you just say, I don't want a part of it, like the women did, you know, that turned a blind eye. It's a very odd time very odd time and the next person we're going to be talking about is going to be Elizabeth Bathory which kind of shows a little bit even deeper into that odd time if you will and shows you how much can be going on around you without you even knowing like you could have no idea that the girl next door in the castle is just like bathing in people's blood because she thinks that you know, she'll keep her youth and she'll keep her beauty. Again, with the mental illness problems of this era, like I'm telling you, if Dr. Phil could have been live during that time, he'd have a lot of fixing to do. I am just gonna throw that out there. He would have had a lot of fun. But I'm just saying, it was, it, it's crazy because again, we just look at them as true crimes. We just look at them as you know, the women that kind of went crazy during that time, but in all reality, it was mental illness. It was a problem. It was something that they should have had help with, but again, that wasn't a thing then. So, I just want to also make sure to let you guys know again about these awesome products from Metaluso. They are, you know, if you want to go ahead and keep sponsoring the channel, have some fun with me, we're going to do these looks. I plan on doing them at least a couple times a week, you know, and uh, keep the fun going. If you have anybody that you want to hear about or maybe you want me to dive a little bit more deeper into, please leave me a comment below. That'd be awesome. It's also very, very helpful to see what you guys want. And I'm curious. I want to know, like, how far do you guys get into these things? Is it something that you're very interested in or are you more like, Yeesh. like, that's just crazy. I don't know. I'm not feeling it. Which, that's fine too. I'll hear that as well. I'm not even, I'm not partial to, to any kind of criticism like that. So, you know, for, for anybody that has anything in mind that they would want to um, see or, or hear more about, please let me know. I think it'll be awesome. Some of these women are very fascinating. Like I said, some of them could even be seen as like low-key entrepreneurs, like the first the first hustlers of our time which is interesting when you start taking that look at it and you're going wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute she not only was a killer but she was a genuine businesswoman of like the victorian era what the heck where did all these people go wrong these guys are walking around with actually very very smart women around them they could have been more than what they were but guess what women were just not that great looked on at that time they were not seen as you know entrepreneurs they were not seen as smart they were not seen as anything other than a baby machine <laughs> so if you want to put it lightly it's not even putting it lightly that's kind of what it is so in a very weird way I think Julia a little bit of Julia probably lives in all of us we all get mad at people around us sure but some of us are just businesswomen, you know? But some of us might even feel trapped. Some of us might feel like we can't go into depth with things and we can't uh, do the things that we wanna do maybe because someone around you is stopping us. But here's the thing. The difference is, is that back then there wasn't help. Back then they didn't give you, like I said, that little lifeline, that, that nudge in the right direction. Where nowadays we know we know women aren't stupid. We know women, you know, they do their thing. We are very aware of our worth nowadays. It's not like it was back then. So again, it's one of those things that we sit back now and can go, wow. Not only was this a crazy, crazy tale, but it might've been 
a weird stepping stone into the way women were seen. Now, I'm not saying what she did dramatically changed that in any way, because if you, you know, go on to see history and you go from Julia's story, you know, on to like some others that, you know, kind of lost it or lost their way, we'll say, um, or felt trapped. But it might have been enough to, uh, you know, shake a few men, because I'll tell you what, if I was a man in that era, you best believe if I know this is happening, especially in a town around me, anywhere near me, I am checking everything. Even those orderless people, I'm going to find a way to have that tested. I'm not drinking soup. I'm not eating nothing. Nothing that's not tested. Especially, you know, do you know how scary that had to be to be a man in that time period, knowing that like women are just walking around doing this? Now, you know, I bet you they really did get their act together. I mean, you would hope after all of this. Yeah, Julia's no longer with them, but at the end of the day, you know they're gonna be on high alert. Just saying. Like, they'd be stupid not to be. There were still bottles of her elixir somewhere. You know, there had to be friends that stored this stuff. I'm pretty sure she didn't make it one batch at a time. So, if you were a man in that time and you were wanting to uh, make sure you weren't going anywhere anytime soon, I think you'd be smart enough to not put yourself in that situation. So, if anything, you would just hope, you would truly, truly hope that Julia at least started that, you know, that's built that stepping stone to having or at least hoping to have that impact to where men you know kind of were a little bit more alert maybe on high alert maybe that was her plan all along maybe she just wanted to be around long enough to help whomever she could knowing that any time that she's caught knowing there's a high risk of her being caught actually I mean you've got to know that you've got to know that in that time Women weren't only allowed to do much, but they weren't, I'm pretty sure they weren't allowed to keep secrets, especially not from their husbands, like, come on. You know, if you can't go out alone or you can't do basic things that we take for granted even today, I'm pretty sure you weren't gonna be allowed to keep a secret. And if you did, well, it wasn't gonna be good for them. So, you know, maybe in a sick, sick way, Julia paved that little, put that little bit of fear in them, made it to where they thought twice about raising a hand, thought twice about, you know, cheating on them and doing all these crazy things that make them want to use whatever was left over or might have been left over. Because like I said, if I was a man in that era, I would definitely be on high alert. Because some of these men probably truly believed that they had nothing to worry about. I mean, think about it. They were probably like, Mwah. my wife, <laughs> she's fine. She's in there cooking eggs right now. Like, what's going on here? She's good. No worries. So, <laughs> all right, you guys. Well, I'm going to finish this up. Well, I hope, first of all, you guys had fun with the story. It actually, I know it's not fun because it's, it's true. It's a true story, right? But at the end of the day, it depends on how you look at it. Are you open-minded? Do you believe that Julia was more of an entrepreneur? Do you believe that Julia was the only way for some of these women? Do you sympathize with them? Or are you on the other end of the spectrum where you believe that what she did was exactly the opposite? She was a complete treachery. She was the worst form of a woman. She showed nothing you know, positive for women, and she got what was coming to her. I want to know. I want to know. Please let me know. Leave, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. You know, which end are you on? Do you believe what she did was great? Or do you believe what she did was just horrific? And no one deserves that. Me, I don't have an opinion either way. I'm completely biased with this because there are good and bad to everything, to everybody. So, and that's truly how I feel about things. And again, you know, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just telling the story. I'm just sharing the story and how it links to the tragic tales that are sometimes 
what come out of something very beautiful. Because like I said, for Julia and her mother, um, so they were both seen as beautiful women. They were both seen as, like I said, great women of the time. And they were both seen as someone to obviously admire and trust, which is crazy. Because what they were doing was actually, nowadays would be considered criminal. So it's a weird, weird way of thinking of things. But like I said, please don't forget to check out my friends at Metalusal. The links will be below. I mean, you can't deny this beautiful, beautiful natural look. Um, it truly is a great, and this was it, you know, I used a couple of other, I used a different mascara because uh, I don't have their mascara yet. So I did use that, but everything else was from Metalusa. So um, I hope you guys had fun hearing about Julia. Uh, like I said, the next person we're going to be talking about is Elizabeth. Um, so she was another, <laughs> another beautiful tragedy. So like I said, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, I'll keep you guys updated on these beautiful train wrecks that is the women of our era, whether you see them as great or horrific, that's for you to let us know. So definitely start a conversation. I want to hear it. All right, you guys. Well, until then, you guys have a great, great rest of your day and be sure to tune in. All right. Bye, guys.